September the 9th, 2023. Guys, hope everyone's having a safe weekend. We're getting much cooler weather here in central Mississippi. It is now 5.40 p.m. And I'm turning, excuse me, to look at my weather station. We're 89 with a real feel of 93. Feels like fall compared to the 120s and 115s where we were getting in the heat indices. Uh, such a blessing we're actually able to get out and do a few things in the yard we needed to be taken care of. It's just been too hot to deal with it. And so it's it feels good and uh, we're hoping that it continues. It's going to warm back up slightly, but we're getting into that time of the year that uh, we're going to see it start to cool off. And it's a, a big blessing for everybody, including the fact that um, air conditioners will be used less and there are going to be less grid downs because of the uh, excess use and this heat that we've been seeing. Here we've got a Category 3, remember it had elevated to a Cat 5 at one time. It's going to remain a 3, it looks like, until Monday at 2 a.m., back to a 4. We're going to stay that way until Tuesday at 2 a.m. It's predicted to go back down to 120 mile per hour storm and then by Thursday at 2 p.m. still a Cat 3 at 115. A Cat 3 starts guys at 111 miles per hour and goes to 129 miles an hour. Cat 4 is 130 to 156, 157 and higher you're into your Cat 5s. But again, your millibars and pressure is 958. And guys, they're talking about as the storm gets closer to Florida and the south or northeastern U.S., the east coast, that you're going to start seeing increase in waves because of the size and strength of the storm along the shorelines, rip currents, and things like that. So make sure you keep that in mind, uh, even uh, starting in just a few days, if you're going to be along the coast, especially if you're swimming and things. And, uh, or surfing or something like that. Just be aware that there's a lot of energy out in the Atlantic pushing things west. Now let's take a satellite view of the wide Atlantic as the sun is setting all the way across from Africa to the center. Now what you're seeing here is Hurricane Lee, Cat 3. This is Margot. It's supposed to kind of parallel with it and push up. But there's a storm, guys, that is coming off of Africa right here that's south of the Cabo Verde Islands and that's important to where this thing could go. Some of the models that are looking out in time is going to have this thing following exactly behind Lee but maybe a little cl closer to the east coast. Let's take a look at those models but first let's look at some of the infrared images and you can see the recycling of the storm it starts out you can see an eye starting to form. We've seen it before and then it dissipates. That's going to pick back up, but that's why they're saying it's going to go back to a Category 4. Here's uh, a Margot. This was an unnamed storm here that may become very important to the U.S. before this is said and done. Now, you guys in the northeast, you're already under flash flood and severe thunderstorm warnings as we speak. Now, this is still on the hurricane satellites, but you guys in the northeast in this area, go to your National Weather Service and click on your local radars. You'll see that you are getting uh, flash flood warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings now. I didn't see any hurricane, excuse me, tornado warnings out, but it, you're getting a lot of rain, and you're, it's kind of pre-saturating the soil in this area, uh, regardless of where the impact is. Now, guys, let's take a look at the Navy model first. You can see that New York and Long Island area is not right in that strongest part of the storm, just on the outer edges of it. Bermuda, you're going to get hit hard by the worst side of the storm. Now, this is going to change over the next several days, but that's what the models are showing. You can see this oscillation between uh, Lee and Margot here. It's barely showing a system moving off the African coast, but a lot of the models are really paying attention to the one that's predicted to follow Lee in this path, but maybe a little closer. Now, if you look at this, this is Maine right here, the largest state in the northeast. You're right on the edge of some of the stronger bands in the outer winds. What that's going to do is throw, if you think about it, and I'll pause it right here. Back up one. The storm is counterclockwise, right? So 
where is that weather going to come from both wind and high waves it will be definitely be right into your area so it, it, everything's going to be turning this way and so Maine you're going to start seeing winds coming out of the east and northeast as the storm gets closer up it'll be, it'll be changing but that's what you got to pay attention to so especially for all you if, in Maine, you got the lobster boats. I, I guess Biden still allows fishing. I'm not sure. Maybe heavily restricted, if I remember some reports from a year or so ago. They don't like uh, farmers. They don't like fishermen, things like that. You know how it goes. But be prepared for the winds starting to come. For, you'll see the push from the south, but when it gets strong, you're going to be in the winds that I'm talking about in this red area. So make sure you're planning on that when you i don't know if you guys can get up river with your uh, lobster boats or whatever you can do but be prepared for this because it's going to be savage even along that section of the coast i'll let it play through one more time and cutting up st john's nova scotia pretty good lick you guys are going to take right through there like I said you're going to be right on the edge of this model it's done this every day we went to the left yesterday the day before that more to the right and so we're starting this out today on the 9th we're going to see impact here starting in Bermuda on the 15th by the way tomorrow is the peak of hurricane season and then let's play this forward right here bringing uh, about to impact uh, the St. John's Newfoundland area and here is Maine this is on the 16th one more day pretty much ashore well, again all your high winds are going to be coming from this direction and this thing could do a lot of damage guys in this area now today like I could emphasize guys the change is changing every day and we expect that the Canadian model is getting very close to following the Navy model, but the European model is not, and uh, it's getting close to where you can pay a close attention to that. Right here, storms approaching. This is September 16th. Shout out to uh, the firehouse guys uh, along the east, northeast coast in that area for looking uh, and watching and waiting for these videos to come up. I appreciate it very much. You guys be very safe. If you're involved in rescue, which most of you are, be prepared for that. And long, be prepared for this. As the storm gets closer and we know more about it, look at your tide charts. As it approaches your area along the coast, are you going to be at high or low tide? That's going to give you a lot of information about what you need to do with your boats uh, and your low-lying areas, things like that. So pay attention. This is 16th. Step it forward. There's a 17th. You're off the, the uh, Nantucket coast here. So we're still at the 17th here, approaching land right there, September 18th. Everything's about to go downhill in this area. Again, we're going to have to watch for changes. Now, this is the storm that I said they're watching that's came off the uh, African coast south of the Cable Verde Islands here. So let's play this thing through. Notice how it intensifies and there's high pressure setting up in this area, which is a steering factor for these storms. So you're going to possibly have this storm come in somewhere right in this area and this one intensifying almost in the exact path, but this high pressure area is going to steer it more to the left. Now let's take a look at the European model. Now this is the European model and you'll notice a few things here. Got, here's Lee, Margaret, and the secondary storm coming off the African coast. Let's stop this here. It's going to be, according to the European model, which a lot of people swear by, a direct hit into New York and Manhattan Island in this area. Here's Margaret, and here's a secondary storm. Just step this forward. Right there, that's September the 17th, guys. That's going to be your day when it really gets rough on you we'll step it forward a little more moving very fast that's september 18th straight across main you at this particular model you'll be catching the worst of it on this edge right there 
Now let's look at the global forecast system model. This is wave height, wind direction, and uh, I'll play it through. You'll also see the secondary storm coming off of Africa on this particular model. In the hot pink, guys, you're up here at 37 to 40 foot heights, and then you get up to 48 to 50 when it gets lighter. Here's the second storm that I'm talking about right here. Wave heights, again, very similar, but it makes a left turn a little closer to land here. So if you're going to be in, let me pause it there and kind of get it more accurate, along the shore wave height measurement here. Step it forward one more time. Say, look at uh, off of uh, Long Island, and in your yellows here, you're going 10 to 12 feet. You start getting into your browns up into this area. You're in the 16, 15, 17, 18 foot range. You start getting into the orange areas, wherever that is, depending on which model. You're going to be getting guys into uh, some serious stuff uh, close to 19, 20 foot seas on top of whatever the tide's doing, right? So be aware of that. That could be, and notice what the direction as it moves forward. Let's play it through one more time. And you can see it's affecting everything and notice your wind direction as it gets close to you. That was a secondary storm. Here's Lee. Just as I was saying, this wind direction, pay attention to that coming in. And so where, if it gets Maine, if it gets into the St. John's area in that section of the country, it will depend on the wave height. But that's going to be important because we've seen hurricanes in the last few years come in and flood um, the subways in New York City, things like that. So those are the type risk rescue situations that are going to occur. Now go into our website, bpearthwatch.com. Guys, scroll down on the left. There's tons of links here. And on the right, Tina puts up a lot of neat articles, especially about space and science and things like that. But I'll tell you what's neat is come down to space weather right there. Click on that link. Many of you have seen this site before. If you haven't, spaceweather.com. Again, direct link on our site. A couple of interesting things I want to talk about. One is we have a large sunspot and it's facing Earth. It's called AR-3423. It has doubled in size since Friday. That was yesterday. The active region is now more than 100,000 kilometers wide with four primary dark cores wider than the Earth. The sunspot's magnetic poles are well separated, so it does not yet pose a threat for strong flares. If this changes, however, the sunspot is directly facing Earth, so any strong flares will be geo-effective or Earth-effective. Well, you can click here and get a larger picture of that. And guys, you can see it right here, 3423. And they're seeing their dark, uh, dark spots, and then let me bring it up are as large as our planet and I think I did this one time and the it would take a hundred and nineteen of our earths if you just cut and pasted size to size in perfect ratio to cross the sun facing side that you see a hundred and nineteen of our planets and we're lucky to be 93 million miles away from it but God placed everything in a perfect ring for life as we know it and all the animals know it on this planet. Something else I think is neat, I reported on it back when they first spotted the comet and they said that as it got closer to Earth that you would be able to see it with the naked eye. So far the reports are that with binoculars or backyard telescope they're getting good images. And that, uh, what we're talking about here is Comet Nishimura or C2023P1. Let me pull this up a little. And these are beautiful images. The landscape, everything, guys, the bright stars, the moon. Right here is Comet Nishimura. Right there. See, that's magnificent. It said, bright comet at dawn. And now, you're gonna if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're going to have to look to the north. Look north just before sunrise because it's... Uh, it would be much brighter than it is, but it's close to where you view it before it goes down behind the uh, landscape that you see here below the horizon. And so you've just got a few minutes there before 
uh, daylight to see it, but you're going to have some light interference, just like you're seeing the sunrise over the horizon in this image. So it's just, uh, if you're up before daylight, look north in binoculars, uh, backyard telescopes, and some of these guys are using high-tech imagery, as you see here. It's beautiful. And you only got a couple mornings left to get this because it's diving closer to the sun. But it says, this morning I was su successful in photographing comet Nishimuro from Slovakia, where the comet appeared against a slightly cloudy sky. This is Peter Horlick. Its tail is so bright that I could see it easily in my backyard telescope. Latest estimates of the comet's brightness place it at a magnitude plus 4.5. In a dark sky, this would be visible to the unaided eye, but the morning sky is not dark. Cameras are required to pluck the comet from the twilight of dawn. Many photographers are finding that less than a minute of exposure time is enough for a nice picture. Horlick's photo is a stack of 20-second shots at ISO 800. The mornings ahead will be more difficult. Comet Nishimuro is plunging toward the sun for a close encounter inside the orbit of Mercury on September the 17th. About the time the hurricanes are coming in, increasing glare will challenge astrophotographers. And you'll see here in the blue, it's got observing tips, a sky map, and I checked it out. That's why I'm saying you're going to be needing to look north. But it's got a real-time comet photo gallery, and I'm talking about with some big telescopes. Let's check that out. Now, this is from this morning from the Czech Republic. Uh, it's Martin Gimbeck on September the 9th. And, guys, look at this. You see all of these tails? These are millions and millions of miles long. And uh, every time you get a solar flare or a pulse from the sun come in, you'll see it cut through these tails as you watch them come in. But this is magnificent. Again, uh, just before dawn, get your camera out, maybe a good camera least your telescope and binoculars and see if you can see it but I want to pull up this image a little closer and when you do that guys it's going to make it very large and very dynamic look at the stars in the background but you'll have to scroll down just look at what our father in heaven creates isn't that amazing and this is your nucleus here some of the images almost looks like it has two nuclei it's what you would call at that point and I've seen them as it, again, we're saying it's getting ready to do its close approach and slingshot around the sun. That's when you'll see it fragment if it's going to do it is during, because it'll increase speed each day. And I've seen comets come in the inner solar system at a million miles per day. By the time it's wrapping around the sun, 11 million miles per day. So that, that gravitational sling back into space will do that but again amazing images let's look at one more and if you go back click on the real-time image gallery that I was showing you in blue it's going to show you uh, imagery from around the world different angles different shots of it different photographers it's amazing you've got a couple of comments they're talking about here but mostly it's Nishimuro and uh, again just some of the imaging is incredible the you got this one from Michael Yeager we've seen him for years on here with different comments Let's just take a quick look at it. Now, Michael took this this morning, September the 9th, uh, from Martinsburg, Austria. Again, looking north. Check this out. I'll just scroll it up. Look at how much of a tail it has. And they'll have two tails. You'll have your debris trail, then you'll have an iron tail that could be blowing. That's not real clear and visible here, but it will be blowing off in a different direction because that is where the sun's coming from. In other words, the ionization. Tra uh, trail and then your debris trail is it starts peeling off more and more uh, debris around it as it gets closer to the warmer sun but you can go there and check all these out and check it out and if you get any images guys if you have a YouTube channel put them on there if not let us know on uh, in the comments and we'll try to get them up let folks see them I think it's a really neat th thing it, again, I wish it was uh, a little earlier in the night where you wouldn't have that morning glare and you could, that, like they said, it would be visible naked eye. But it would probably be break, uh, worth breaking out of a pair of binoculars or a scope or a very nice digital camera with zoom. You may have once in a lifetime pictures. 
But we're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.